So the topic for today is suffering. And I noticed a couple of people like scratching. That's suffering. Right there, that's suffering. Um, so the Buddha's, Buddha's practice comes out of suffering. And it's a very interesting story because the Buddha was apparently raised um, that he had everything he wanted, that he never saw anything that could possibly disturb his mind. Uh, somehow he never even stubbed a toe. Um, if you believe that, I've got a couple of bridges across the Missouri River. I'd be happy to sell you. Um, you know, somehow none of his friends got sick. He never got sick. Nobody around him died. You know, he didn't have any pets who died. I don't know how they rigged that. But anyway, so um, the Buddha lived this life of such total and absolute privilege. He had every toy in the world. He had like the you know, fastest raced cars, he had the best technology, he had the iPhone 11 before it even came out, you know, and so the Buddha lived this incredibly privileged life with supposedly no suffering. And um, then he bribes his charioteer to get him out of the palace, for God's sake, he's sick of this. Now, the palace, of course, isn't just a building, it's like this huge estate of hundreds and hundreds of acres. But anyway, he finally gets out of the palace, and the first, thing, first time he does that, he sees somebody old. I'm old. But he sees somebody old and he says, oh my God, what's that? Like somehow he never saw an old person. Okay. Um, anyway, so he says, oh my God, what's that? Oh, that's an old person. Oh my God, that's horrible. Then the next time he goes out, he sees a sick person. And he says, oh my God, what's that? Oh, that's a sick person. Oh my God, that's horrible. You know. And then the next time he comes out, he sees a dead person. Like, oh my God, what's that? That's a dead person. Oh my God, that's horrible. You mean we're going to die? What is this? You know. And then he sees, like the fourth time he goes out, he sees... Um, an ascetic, and he says, what's that for? And the ascetic, of course, is just glowing and peace and everything. He says, what's that? Oh, that's an ascetic. Oh, man, I want to do that. You know, That's the story of the Buddha. But what's interesting about this is that the Buddha was not prompted to leave his privileged life because of his own suffering. Now, how many people in this room started meditation practice because of their own suffering? Yeah, I'm surprised there's so few of you. Usually it's everybody. <laughs> yeah, so we get caught up in our own suffering. And we want a way out of that suffering. And that's why many of us come to practice, many of us go to church, many of us go to synagogue, mosque, you name it. We try to do something, we do yoga, we run, we do something to try to alleviate our own suffering. But the Buddha, he wasn't caught up in his own suffering because he didn't have any of his own suffering. Instead, he was caught up in the suffering of this world. And the great question that he had when he went out into the forest, cut his hair, traded his beautiful clothes with a beggar, and practiced very, very hard for many, many years, the great question he had is, why do we suffer? That was his question. Why is there suffering? So suffering is at the heart of Buddhism. And the first noble truth is all existence is suffering. It's sometimes translated as life is suffering. But it's actually all existence is suffering. And the word suffering is a little bit misleading because it makes it sound like something horrendous. But the suffering is exactly when you're scratching an itch. It's this feeling of dissatisfaction. So the, the um, Sanskrit word is dukkha. And I happen to live with a guy who's very uh, linguistically talented. And so through him, I know that dukkha is related to the uh, English D-Y-S, like dysfunctional dysphoria. So this is this almost cosmic dissatisfaction. If we have something, we don't want it. And if we don't have something, we do want it. So that's what this suffering is. And the causes of suffering are desire and anger and ignorance. That's the second noble truth. Here are the causes of suffering, desire, anger, 
and ignorance. And we often personalize this. If I can get rid of my desire, anger, and ignorance, I will no longer suffer. But I was hearing in the news today about a family, a refugee family in Syria, trying to escape the incredible bombardment and how their youngest child, an infant, had frozen to death because they had no way of getting any kind of, of help. There was no food, there was no clothing, there was nothing. And she froze to death. And that child did not cause her suffering by her desire and anger and ignorance. And her parents did not cause her suffering by their desire, anger, and ignorance. And their grief was not caused by their desire, anger, and ignorance. It was caused by our desire, anger, and ignorance. By the desire and the anger and the ignorance of governments and political parties and people jockeying for power and people allowing them to jockey for power. That is the cause of suffering. So it's not like you cause your own suffering. It's like you cause everyone's suffering. We all cause everyone's suffering. And that's a very hard thing to look at. But it's not about us. Just like with Buddha, it wasn't about his own suffering. It was about the suffering of the world. So what the Buddha saw when he woke up, and that's enlightenment is a bad translation. He awakened. Bodhi means awakened. So when the Buddha woke up, what he saw is a star. Actually, he saw a planet. He saw the planet Venus. And he saw this star, this planet, and he said, how wonderful. Each thing is already complete. Each thing already has it. That's all. And this complete means completely not separate. So this is the great Mahayana vision. The Mahayana vision is that we are not separate. We are not separate from each other. We are not separate from the planet. I am not separate from this bell. All things interpenetrate. And those are not pretty words to make us feel good. That's the absolute truth. We are not separate. And that means that this ocean of suffering is also this ocean of vows, these great vows to alleviate suffering. They're not separate. When we act for ourselves, then we are always causing trouble. When we act freely for others, then that's when our life is truly complete. So there's a chance. So I'm, I'm one of the teachers at the um, Kansas Zen Center. And there's this part of the morning bell chant. We're a very traditional Buddhism. Um, in the Korean tradition. And um, what it translates word for word, the way these four lines translate, is vow together, Dharma world, all many beings. Together enter Amida Buddha's great vow ocean. Exhaust future, come occasion, save many beings, self, other, one time attain Buddha way. And in a more fluent English translation, this was actually part of my husband's and, I, and my wedding vows. Um, because our wedding was not just for each other, it was together for this world. So that was part of our wedding vows. So it's very interesting, because it's not this idea of, I am going to save you. It's that together, all the many beings come together. And all the many beings 
together enter this great ocean of vows. And throughout time, exhaust future, that means throughout time, it never ends. Throughout time, we work together to save all beings. So all beings are working together to save all beings. That's a very interesting notion. It's not the privileged few helping the you know, sad and misbegotten. It's all beings together, and not just on this planet Earth, all beings throughout the universe, saving all beings, liberating all beings throughout the universe. And together, at once, attaining the Buddha way. That's a very interesting notion. So how do we use our suffering? What do we do with it? Does it constrict our vision? Or does it expand our vision? When we are not suffering, can we see another's suffering? Can we respond to that without judgment, without making ourselves higher and making them lower? That's the great challenge. So together, the many beings, we are just part of this vast, vast ocean of vows. Please enter into it fully. Thank you. Thank mm-hmm. you.